Welcome to Manson Noise Math Lab. Thanks for joining. I wanted to continue our conversation regarding trending. Very frequently, um, as a pricing actuary, one of the things you have to do is you have to project all of our expenses, losses, premiums to a future date. What future date would you like to trend them to? Well, we'd like to trend them to the date in which the new rates, which we're proposing rates for, are in effect. So we have some date right now. In the case of this example, they're evaluated. My data is as of 2018, right here actually. So we are at the end of 2018. This will be in this calendar year is in my experience period. Uh, by the way, when we're talking about losses, we'll say the accident year. Um, and I guess I'll have to get into that at some point, but a lot of times for occurrence based policies, we consider losses on an accident year basis and premiums on a calendar year basis. So I box in my experience period. This is where basically these are the three years I have data for. If you look at the question, if I didn't mention already, always read it five to a hundred times as per the usual. So I'm looking at the question here as well. And if you haven't already, go back um, to the first video I made on this where um, I discussed these trends. I mean, I just gave you the trends here. What, where are they from? Um, I'll refer to that in the upper right-hand corner to give you a little context there. So let me get back to what I was saying. We are, imagine that we're at the fourth quarter of 2018, or maybe just this is where the data is that we have. So the fourth quarter, the end of the fourth quarter, and we have three years of data. And what we'll end up doing is we'll end up um, taking the losses here, okay? And what we'll do is we'll find a loss trend based off the data I've given you in the question. Once we have that loss trend, we'll project our losses out to the effective date because we want our losses to be restated at what those losses would be valued at during the period in which our rates are in effect. That's where the actual stuff comes in. So let me um, go ahead and draw in our effective date. Our effective date here is July 1st, 2020. So our rates are going into effect right here, halfway through um, 2020. So this is 7-1, 2020. And our policies are semi-annual. Okay, so policyholders purchase a semi-annual um, policy and I'm going to draw it this way because if you bought a policy on 7-1 it would earn all the way through up to right it would expire at 1-1-2021 now policies are in effect for a year so maybe this is calendar year 2021 they're in effect for a year so if you bought um, you could purchase a policy under these current rates, under these rates that we're, we're proposing from 7-1-2020 to 7-1-2021. Okay, so I have this. And if you bought them anywhere in this time period, since they're semi-annual, they would earn in uh, for six months or half a year. So it's going to become a little more apparent why I'm drawing this parallelogram here in a minute. But just bear with me from now on. Uh, this is essentially our future experience period or the date in which rates are in effect, right? All right, so what we need to do is it says to calculate a pure premium trend factor. So this is where you have some sort of leeway about how you want to make decisions here. And looking at this data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I look at my frequency trend um, it's an exponential fit, and I've done some videos on that, so I'll take a look at those. But here it's given us an exponential fit, and they all look pretty close to negative one. So I'm going to select a negative one frequency trend. And since they're all kind of very similar, I'm only going to do one trend. I'm only going to do a single trend for frequency. So my selected frequency trend is negative one percent. Now, if I look at the severity, severity is a little bit different because I noticed that the 12 point, and by the way, 
a lot of times I draw this picture, I'll sometimes break these up into quarters. So there's my quarters. And if you look at these points, I see four, six, and eight points. So these picks are either based off of four points of data or take all eight points of these data points, right? Or take all 12. And what I notice here is that for severity, it looks like I have a negative trend for 12 points and then most recently I have about a 3% trend. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select, um, I'm gonna select negative 0.2 as my historical. So selected historical trend. Well, I should say uh, historical severity trend. Let's select uh, that um, negative 0.2, negative 0.2 percent. Now I need to also select selected um, you can either say projected severity trend or future severity trend and I'll explain what this means in a minute. And let's make that equal to three percent. So there's kind of several there's a lot of ambiguity that goes into this. There's a lot of sort of what's often referred to as actuarial judgment. It makes me laugh every time I think of that. But, I mean, you could have also chosen 3.3%. That's the most recent, right? Or you could take an average. Or you could just do a single trend for severity. Um, we've already done a single trend for frequency. Or you could do a historical frequency, a, a projected frequency. Or you could just pick a pure premium trend right off the bat. So a lot of different things you can do. And you should usually justify the selections you're making. So what I'm saying is uh, I'm splitting out frequency and severity separately. I see that frequency is about negative one, but I see historically for severity it's a little bit different, so I select a negative 0.2. For more recent uh, quarters for severity, it looks like it's positive, so I selected positive three. And now what am I gonna do with these? What I'm gonna do with these is I need to, again, I need to project my losses out to the effective period. So think about what severity is. Severity, if you recall, is just loss per claim. It's an average. It's like our average loss per claim. So what we wanna do is we're looking at our average losses and we're saying, what are those trending at? We wanna get an idea of what those losses will be restated at at this future period. So it makes a lot of sense. And you think kind of what we're gonna ultimately do is we take our losses maybe the losses in accident in year 2016, which is what they asked me about. Take those losses, find an average loss trend, which is pure premium trend, trend those losses to the future date, restate those losses, now we know how much those losses will be in our effective period. There's so much going on that I could just talk about this forever, but let's stick to the video. Let's stick to the question at hand. Now, what am I gonna do with these numbers? Let's start with frequency trend. Okay, frequency trend, I've only selected one value. Okay, I need to project, we're concerned with 2016. Okay, calculate the pure premium trend factor to accident year, uh, for accident year 2016 to be used in the rate indication. So what I'm going to do is I need to find out, I need to find some date in 2016 and I need to project that to some date in the effective period. So. The idea is this, we use a lot of averages. So what I wanna do is I wanna find the average accident date for 2016. Okay, so if I have semi-annual policies, if I have semi-annual policies, then the average accident date in 2016, I claim is gonna be July 1st. And you can think about that because any essentially Remember, semi-annual policies. If I purchase a policy after July 1st, 2015, I could experience a loss in 2016. In fact, if I purchase a policy anywhere from here to here, I could experience a loss in 2016. 
And if I drew this right here, if I bought a policy here, then that would earn up to 2017. If I take the average, if I take this average of this line, this is from January 1st, 2016 up to July 1st, 2017, the average would put me at 10 1 2016. The average of this line would put me at 4 1 2016. The average of 10 1 2016 and 4 1 2016 is right here. So I'm going to trend from this date, 7 1 2016. So I hope that made sense. I'm going to go over it again right here. But the average accident date for calendar year 2016 is 7 1 2016. What is the average accident date for the effective period? It's the same sort of deal. So if I take, if I take the average here, I essentially want the average of the parallelogram. So if you just imagine, if you think about it, it should land, it should land somewhere like right here. That should be the average of the parallelogram, right? Because think about it, anytime you buy a policy in here, this is where the, the new rates are, they're gonna earn six months. What's the average accident date? That's where we wanna trend losses. We wanna trend losses to the average accident date, the average loss date. One way to think about that is to draw this picture. What I like to do when I, when I go over this, when I convince myself, is I always take the average of the top, and then I average of the bottom, and then I average those two. I don't know why, that's just how I think about it. So the average of the bottom, the average of the bottom is right here. It's exactly um, January 2021. The average of the top is right here. It's 7 1 2021. And if I average these two points, that will give me the one right in the middle. What is the one right in the middle? This is going to be 4 1 2021. So that's what we're going to trend do. So I'm going to trend from there to there. I'm going to trend from 7 1 all the way to 4 1. Now, when I do severity, I'm going to have to break it up. But for frequency, I only have one selection. So let's do that. So I have these. Okay, so selected frequency trend is negative 1%. Now, that's to be distinguished from the selected frequency trend factor. The selected frequency trend factor is now I need to take one plus my negative uh, 1%. And I need to compound that, I need to raise that to a power. How far am I projecting this frequency trend? Well, I need to go one, two, three, four and three quarters. I need to project it out to 4.75 years. Now you're like, well, now you're, hopefully for me, I was like, oh, this is why we had to learn all that financial math stuff. <laughs> Not really, but I mean, we did a lot of this kind of stuff with compounding interest, right? This is kind of like compounding interest. All right, so now I have that. Let's do our historical. So what is our selected historical trend? Uh, severity, severity trend factor. That's going to be, well, we need to break this up now. For severity, I selected two different trends. I have a historical and a projected. For the historical one, I'm going to take my losses in 2016 and I'm going to project them not all the way, but I'm going to project them to the current evaluation year to the average of the current evaluation year. So I need to project those two years, one, two. Same argument, by the way. The average, the average accident day in 20, calendar year 2018 is also 7 1 2018. So I have my selected historical, it's this guy. So it's one plus negative 0.002 raised to the two power, right? I'm only taking it two years. Now I'm gonna take this piece now I'm going to take this and then project that to the future. Using what trend? Using the projected trend. Aha. 
So hopefully it's starting to make sense. So selected, selected, projected, or future, severity, trend, factor. This is equal to 1 plus 0 0.03 to the what? I need to go 1, 2, and 3 quarters. 2.75. So what is my pure premium trend factor? So therefore, this could be called composite premium, pre premium trend factor, or this is really my selected pure premium trend factor is the product of these three things. Remember, pure premium is frequency times severity. So if I multiply these three together, let's see what we get. Multiply these. Okay, so I have this guy. 1 minus 0.01 raised to the 4.75, so my frequency, <clears throat> severity was broken up, so times 1 minus 0 0.002 raised to the squared power, and then times 1 plus 0 0.03 raised to the 2.75, and what I get, wow, that was really lucky I didn't plan this or anything, I made these numbers up, and I got this. So this is equal to 1.03 approximately. I got 1.02999 blah blah blah. So this is my average. <clears throat> my average is 1.03 and just to give you an idea of what you would do with this again, this is essentially what we're saying here is that losses trend at 3% a year, 3% a year. So if you imagine, imagine we're given our losses in 2016. Well, we'd have to take them, we'd have to develop them to ultimate. We have to apply any kind of adjustments that we need to, and then we trend them at 3%. And, and th sorry, this isn't 3% a year. This is actually 3% for the whole time, for the whole time. This is what I would apply to those 2016 losses that would bring them to the level of 2021. So I hope this makes sense. I hope you're trying to put this together. Um, leave comments below, like the video.